بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد الفاتح لما أغلق والخاتم لما سبق ناصر الحق بالحق والهادي إلى صراطك المستقيم وعلى آله وصحبه حق قدره ومقدره العظيم اللهم فعنا بما علمتنا وعلمنا ما ينفعنا وزدنا إلما برحمتك يا رحمة الرحيمين صلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه مبارك وسلم الحمد لله رب العالمين May Allah benefit us from this reading of the book by Imam Ghazali Hujjatul Islam Abu Hamid Muhammad bin Muhammad bin Muhammad Al-Ghazali Rahimahullah Ta'ala We are now at the page, at page, uh, I think, 14. Right? Yeah, page 14. We think that's suitable to discuss the advice, page 14. Uh, before that, perhaps we go on to the last page, uh, the previous one. I think we briefly talked on this. Can you read, brother? Maybe brother, this. This? You don't have, a, you don't have glasses or what? I have glasses. Oh, okay, please. I, I love uh, listening to your reading. That's Perfect. Perfect English. Sorry? It sounds just perfect. It's okay. For <laughs> disciple, how many nights have you spent rehearsing with your learning, reading books, and depriving yourself of sleep? I do not know what the Lord was in this. There was winning the goods of the world, the love of its values, giving its honors, and bringing glory to the devil. Of your associates and peers. Rule to and rule again. If rejected them, it was the revival of the prophet's law and the blessing of the human peace. The cultivation of the character and making the soul that incited to evil, blessing upon you and blessing again. He was told the truth, he spoke the verse. Sleeplessness of the eye but for thy sake is vain, and the crime but for thy loss in the end. Yes, this is, I think we, in, during our last class, we discussed about this topic briefly. And just to recap uh, what Imam Wazali said to his disciple, he said, how many nights have you spent learning, rehearsing, reading books, depriving yourself of sleep? We woke up at night and we read books. What is your intention of reading the books? You want to be a great scholar that people call, people say you are a great scholar, you are alim, you are the best scholar in the world, you are the best, or the best thing that you want people, you know, people call you. This is what Imam Ghazali said. Is that what you are doing all the things? You burn the midnight oil, they say. Is that what you are doing? You want to be famous? You want to gain popularity? You want to have good jobs, you want to be a mufti, you want to be all sorts of things. So Imam Ghazali said, if that is what you are doing, then you are doing is, is wasting your time. It's of no use, it's just in vain. Yeah? Sleeplessness of the eye, but for thy sake, is vain. If you wake up, you don't sleep at night because you are... You are after those things, then your night will be. Your waking up is a, is a waste. So this comes what we, we, we discussed last time, sincerity. Ikhlas. I, I, I mentioned last time ikhlas. This is three things, just very fast. These three things. Sincerity, there are three types of sincerity. One, you do something because you fear of hellfire. You, you pray because you fear that Allah will burn you into hellfire if you don't pray. That is sincere. Go ahead. They have that kind of feeling. There's no problem. Have that kind of feeling. No problem. You are sincere. Or you pray because you wake up at night. You pray tahajud. You pray tahajud. Allahu Akbar. You pray. And you pray after Turaqa. You pray. Why? Because I want to enter paradise. I want to enter the highest paradise. Go ahead, have that feeling. No problem. Bismillah. It's sincere. And the last one, you do not because of the hellfire, not because of 
paradise. You do it because of your abudiyah, because of your servanthood, because you feel that you are obliged to worship Allah. You feel that you are created for that. So you worship him. And this is the, the highest form of sincerity. You don't do it for sure, uh, paradise. You don't do it because you fear of fire. No, you do it because of your obudiyah. But how to achieve that? That's not easy. That's not easy. For the awam, for the layman, if you have that first one and two, that's fine. Don't go more than these three. You can, you can have these three in your heart. In, in whatever things you do, in whatever things you do, you must within these three things. Don't go be after that. You do that because you want people to say you are generous. That's not, that's not sincere anymore. You give sadaqah because you want people to say you are generous. You help people because you want people to say, you know, there was a hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the, in the hereafter. Prophet will, will uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will ask few categories of people. One of them is those who, ma who shuhada martyrs during the battle. And Allah called him, what have you done during your lifetime? He said, oh Allah, you gave me strength. I was, uh, uh, I was uh, brave, blah, 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 blah. I fought for you uh, to uphold Islam and I was killed and I martyred. I did this all for you, Allah. Allah SWT said, you are lying. You lie. You did that because you want people to say that you are brave. You want people to say that you are fighter. Oh angel, drag him to the hellfire. One category. And there is another category. A rich person who donated. Huh? And and he went to Allah and, and Allah called him. He said, I did that for you, blah, 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 so on. To uphold Islam, he said, you, you are lying. You did that because you want people to say you are, you are generous. Go oh, angel, drag him to the hellfire. And the alim, the, the alim, if I'm not mistaken, other riwayah says, Qura, the, the those who read Quran very well. Why you did that? For, you, for Allah SWT, blah, 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 blah. He said, you are lying because you want people to say you are alim. You read Quran very well. You are good at reading Quran. Drag him to the hellfire. So, all kinds of intention you may have, but that is not sincere. You do it because you want your, your father-in-law or if you are Intending to marry a girl, uh, your future mother-in-law, father-in-law say, Oh, this is fire, very nice guy, you should have him as in law, <laughs> son-in-law. That's not sincere. That's not sincere. So, apart from this thing, apart from sincerity, is called, it's called Ria. The opposite of sincerity, the opposite of ikhlas is, is Ria. Is riya. Riya is what? Riya is doing something not for the sake of of Allah. You are asking something else. Of course, there are so many other things, terminology, they use it for riya. If you're doing something, for example, you want people to say that you are good, that is called sumah. Sumah, you will learn this in the future, inshallah. So this in English, they translate it as ostentation. Even in, in, in last time, I think I mentioned a hadith of the Prophet when the Prophet said there are, th there are three types of people. There are people who studied because one, they want to be among the scholars. Another, they want to be above the, the, the ignorance. And another three, they want to be glorified. Okay? These three, three people in the hadith, three types of people, that the Prophet won, especially for the students. If you study, why you study? You want to be among the scholars, peers. 
uh, to be to be to be peers with scholars or you want to show off show off the the ignorance uh, among the ignorance you want to show off that you know better and for us you want to be glorified you want people to respect you you want people to kiss your hand oh this is a sheikh this is a alim so all this is this is not sincere not sincere in seeking knowledge this is not sincere in seeking knowledge i'm talking about seeking knowledge never ever you seek knowledge to have this thing three especially those who said imam ghazali said the term seeking formal knowledge for example you seek knowledge in the university you seeking knowledge like that maybe you don't have that kind of feeling but if you're seeking knowledge in the university you want to become a mufti you want to become this and you become that and you have that kind of feeling proud then this is not this is not sincere so try to avoid that as for the as for the general rule those three things are uh, considered sincere and for the student these are things that should not have should not ever have in their mind cross their mind never ever they have that okay go on uh, o disciple live as long as you want ayuhal walad aish ma shi'ta fa innaka mayyitun wahbib ma shi'ta fa innaka mufariquhu wa'mal ma shi'ta fa innaka majziyun bih ayuhal walad ayu shay'in hasil la okay that's it. read that one first the english one o disciple Live as long as you want, and you must die. Go wherever you want, and you will become separated from it. And do what you want, but you will be paid for it. Yeah. So these are three things that Imam Ghazali says: life, loves, and deeds. No, just so on. Life, love, and deeds. <coughs> This, you know, this is what our Prophet tell us to read the du'a. There is a du'a. The Prophet says, Allahumma arina al-haqqa haqqan warzuqna tiba'ah wa arina al-batila batilan warzuqna ajtinaba. O Allah, show me truth is truth and make it closer to that. And show me the falsehood is false, so that I can and and help me away from that that falsehood. Because you know, in this life, we we don't sometimes we don't really know what is the reality of life. This is what uh, the topic or the 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 poster, the reality of life. We don't really know what the the reality of life. Until Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala tell us what is the reality of our life, what is the reality of our existence. Because of that, we have to always seek Allah guidance to tell us what is the true meaning of this life. You know, we are surrounded by by veils of reality, by veils of truth. We see things as it is, superficially. You look at the moon. How big is the moon or the sun? It looks to your eyes is very small, right? But that is not the reality. Sun and the moon is not that small, just like a piece of coin. No, that's not the truth. Or if you put a pencil inside this glass, oh. You you find the the pencil wheel or the pen wheel what? bent, right? What do you call that? Reflection? What? Deflection? Huh? Refraction, right? We we learn this in science. But the the pen is straight. There's nothing wrong with the pen. Then why it happens like that? Because sometimes your eyes don't tell you the truth, the reality of things. So because of that we must 
ask Allah guidance to help us to tell us the truth the hakikah hakikah of, of something hakikah of things in our life in true life and you won't know this until you have experienced it yourself because of that you will find that there are levels of truth or there are levels of of yaqeen of certainty in your life you know the scholars have have deduced that this there are three levels of of yaqeen in your life for example for example i'm just i'm just i'm just trying to to talk on the reality you know what is reality in in islam in 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 arabic term reality this is haqiqah huh? if you look at haqiqah it comes from the word haq isn't it haqiqah haq what is haq haq is truth and what is haq also haq is right this is my haq Ya, yeah, bahasa bahasa Melayu in Malay also we have. Ini hak saya. Hak. You see, hakika in Islamic terminology means truth. Hak. And the name is Allah also hak. One of the names. Truth and also rights. So what he's to do? You know, we don't really know the reality, and we don't really have the conviction the 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 yakin until you face that kind of situation but if you face that situation then that will be too late for you for example for example we have not reached the paradise yet or we have not entered the barzakh the grave yet but we must have that conviction one day we will go there that is the reality but you don't have to wait at that point of time only then you want to prepare so because of that the scholars mentioned that when you are talking about truth when you are talking about certainty you must begin from the lowest until the, the last one there are three levels of certainty this one i should have thought i should i should have thought earlier or maybe later but i want to tell you now before i forget one is the truth or the certainty 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 of knowledge we are now at certainty of knowledge do you believe the existence of paradise but have you seen it no so you are at the stage of certainty by virtue of knowledge this is called ilmul yaqeen this is called Ilmul Yaqeen. In the Quran, there is a verse. Anyone remember? Anyone remember the verse? Ilmul Yaqeen. Another one. This, a simple analogy for you to understand this, um, this Yaqeen is just like when you see smoke. When you see smoke from afar, smoke. What do you have in mind? There must be, there must be, there must be fire. There must be fire. But have you seen the fire? Not yet. So what you do? You go until you reach at the point where the fire, where the smoke comes from, when the smoke originates. And then you see, you see the you see the fire yourself this is called certainty of vision or ilmu ainul yaqeen good who said that ainul al yaqeen because you have seen it certainty by eyes vision you see it so you have increased from this one from knowledge now you see it 
And then the last one is the call. Huh? Certainty of truth. This is called very good. Aqul yaqeen. So when you see originally just see the smoke and then now you see the fire and now you put your finger inside the fire and you feel the fire, the heat from the fire. So that is called the Hakul Yakin. You tasted. In other words, you you have tasted the the fire. <laughs> You have tasted it. Just like durian. You like durian, brother? Yes. You do? Yes. Huh? Yes. People tell you, durian is like this, durian like that. Yeah, durian is the, 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 the durian, the, the, the fruit is thorny, you know. Blah, 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 blah. It smell, smell awful. The, 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 the westerners don't like it. But it tastes very good, very nice. Very sweet. How sweet it is. Oh, is it like sugar? No, no, no. It's not like sugar. Is it like honey? No, no, no. It's not like... Is it sweet like um, milk? No, 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 no. Because you... You have not tasted it. People tell you all sorts of things, but you don't... You don't... Cannot, cannot understand it. Until you... The people give you a, a... slice of it or... Just taste it. Then you are at the level of... Oh, this is durian. Very delicious. So awful. Awesome. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> so, so, similarly, the reality of life. We here, when we are living in this world, we just see what we see now. This is our life. We see only in front of us. But... The reality of life is not what, what you see now. There are more things to come in the future. So for the scientists, they don't believe in the life after death. They don't believe. If you go, you Google in the internet, you find a lot of sayings from the, the, the or, or findings by the scientists. Yeah, yeah. Be happy. There's no life after death. Do what you want to do. Huh? So, all sorts of things. All sorts of things. But for us Muslims, we believe that there are things you are, you, in this life that you cannot understand by your uh, akal. Alone. You need guidance. There are things beyond your comprehension. You cannot understand it. Beyond. Because your akal it's just like other parts of your body. Just like your eyes have limitation. Just like your ears. There are certain things. Can you, can you, can you listen to ants uh, fighting or talking among themselves? You can't listen to smoke, can Can you listen? You cannot listen. You cannot listen. Can you, eyes, your eyes, can you see how far? One kilometer? No, you cannot see. So similarly, your your mind, your akal also has limitation. You cannot comprehend, you cannot figure out, you cannot think of there is life after death, there is paradise, there is um, hellfire, there is angel. You cannot comprehend it until Allah tells you. Allah tells you. So because of that, we have to have this kind of, of perception that there are things you cannot understand until Allah tells you through the Prophet and then you have that kind of comprehension. And you must always put, you must always put whatever Allah tells you as the truth. I don't like when people always try to find justification from signs to support Quranic, Quranic verse. That is very dangerous if you do that. I just read an article that Pro probiotics? What that? Probiotics or something? Probiotic is, is, is useless. You read, you, you eat what? Yogurt, right? There's probiotics inside. 
I just read it's useless, it's not effective, nothing. This is what, this is the latest finding. They call it latest finding by science. Last time you are encouraged to eat, it's good for your health. Why? Because science keeps on fine, keeps on changing. They change. After some time, you change. They change. So if you bank, if you if you put Al Quran, you bank on science, you will have problem. When science change, how are you going to see it? Are you going to say that Quran is wrong? No, you cannot see it. Of course, Alhamdulillah, now there are so many verses of Quran in accordance with the scientific discovery. But what about after this? People found out different things. Are you saying that Quran is not valid? No. So, be careful when you're putting Quranic verses, especially on the scientific, scientific discovery, to try to prove that, look, science also say the same thing. Yeah, science now say the same thing like Quran. But you don't know after 10 years, 100 years. So, be careful. I'm not saying that don't do that, but be careful because if you are overzealous doing it, then you make it might trap you as well in the future. Okay. So, the life, life in this world is what Allah told us about this life. So, Allah tells us that <coughs> He created us. You, you read what the scientist says. The purpose of life in this world is for you to maximize your, your living. To gain maximum happiness and to minimize your pain. This is what the philosophers and other people are saying. But we Muslims, we don't have that thing. We don't have that kind of perception. When you are talking about your life, your reality of life, your life is not to maximize your happiness. This is what other philosophers, they think about life in this world. Life in this world between happiness And pain. This is what they have in mind. Life in this world is to have maximum happiness. Enjoy. And to reduce your pain, your suffering. This is what they have in their mind. But for us, we have different understanding on our purpose of existing in this life. I think we mentioned last time, our purpose of existing in this life is to, to prong. One is to, one is, one is our servant, servanthood, another one is vicegerent. This is our, this is our, our role in this world. Our role is to be servant, servant of Allah. This is vertically servant of Allah. Horizontally, vicegerent, Khalifatullah. We don't come here to be happy, to have reduced our pain, no. We are here to be vicegerent of Allah at the same time, servant of Allah, servant of Allah at the same time, vicegerent of Allah. Ah, this is kita kata Khalifah. Ah, this is kita kata Amba. Servant. So these are our two roles. So whenever you are performing your Khalifatullah, vice gerency, it must be in accordance with your Abudiyah Allah. You cannot govern this world according to your own whims and fancy. I want to do this, I want to do that. No. Allah SWT has laid down for you to follow certain guidelines when you are governing this world. When you are interacting with people, when you are dealing with people in business, there's no riba, there's no cheating, there's no riba, all sorts of things you have followed. So this must take into consideration your, your horizontal, your vertical and horizontal. I feel like teaching in UIA last time I taught this subject. <laughs> yeah, some people say, if you look at philosopher, they say, there's no purpose in your life. Your existence, there's no purpose. Just like you listen to music, enjoy. Enjoy. So, this is not our, our belief. There's no life after death. 
They said, but of, for us, we believe there is life after death. Only thing, we have not dead yet. But if you look at, if you, if you look at, if you reflect back our life, you must remember, you know, we have been traveling quite a lot. At one time, at one time, we are in the state of soul. Where is this? This is alam, alam, alam arwah or alam roh. Arwah is plural for roh. Spiritual realm, spiritual or world of spirit, we call it, if you want to. We were here last time. How do you know? Because Allah says in the Quran, What is called Rabbuka? It's not what is called Rabbuka. What is Akhaza Rabbuka min Bani Adama min Zuhurihim? Zuhriyatahum. Huh? Well, Hafiz, you should know this. Complete it. Wa ashadahum. Ala anfusihim. Ala stubi rabbikum. Sorry if I, I forgot this, this verse. Alas to be Rabbikum. Am I not your Lord? Please, Allah Marwah. Your soul, huh? your ruh, my ruh, Eris ruh, Justin ruh, Ton Mahathir ruh, whoever, all the politicians and whatnot, no? All the ruh were gathered here. When was this? This is called Yawmu Alas Tu. During the day of Alas Tu. Day of Alas Tu. Because day of Alas Tu is the day when all Ruh were gathered. All Ruh. From the first Ruh until the, the last one. Even Ruh that has not been born yet were gathered during this day. Alas Tu. You look at the Quran. You look at the Quran. I think Surah. I don't know. You find it. Can't remember now. Long time. I not, have not been teaching for, for many years now. I'm not taught. Am I not your Lord? God asked. So he, he replied, all, uh, all of us replied, Bala Shahidna. Verily you are. Verily we bear witness that you are our Lord. Alas tu bi rabbikum. Alas tu bi rabbikum. Am I not your Lord? All of us. Even those now became Muslim or non-Muslim also. The soul, when the spirit of this, they said, yes, we admit that. Because of that, we say, soul has no religion, you know. Soul is not Muslim or non-Muslim. All souls submit to Allah. All souls submit to Allah. All souls belong to submit to Allah. During these days. But now only they become kufr. Not they become you, the, the vehicle. The vehicle. Because you cannot, you cannot figure out. You are confused by, by Iblis. You lost direction. You forgot. That's why insan is, that's why man is called insan. It's called, man is called insan. Why called insan? Because they, they forget. Insan from the word nasia. Nasia. Insan, nasia. Forget. So you forgot this day. You forgot the, 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 the primordial covenant. This is called covenant. Primordial covenant. Sorry, I use a bombastic term. Primordial covenant. And then, when you were at this stage, you came where? Where did you go next? Alam Rahim. Huh? Is your mom's belly here? This one you don't remember, but this one. Your mom's remember. <laughs> At this soul, 
at this row alam at this world during this world we don't remember we don't remember we can't remember <laughs> but here maybe we still cannot remember i believe no one remembers but your moms for sure remember you kick a tummy eh? all kinds of exercise you're doing that all the so here in the mother's womb we, we used to be there or is there anyone not coming from mother's womb here all of us coming from mother's womb so and then we are here we are in this alam shahada alam shahada here physical world we are now here but we are going some more we are going to grave we are going to grave so we are still traveling and then we are going to mahshar and then we are going sirat huh until uh, all those we go to the paradise Okay. So this one, the prophet says, live in this world as though you are traveler. Live in this world as though you are a traveler. Because you are, you are traveling. We are still traveling. Sooner or later, we come here. We come here, sirat, come to the ponds of the prophet until we finish with the paradise of. That's why, now's Billah. We pray that Allah SWT grants us for us all, inshallah. Amen. So, we don't remember this. Your mom remember here. We and your mom remember here. But this one, all this will come. All this will come. Believe, we have seen people died. We have seen people died. The only thing that we have not, we have not, we have not, experience we have not tasted so meaning that you have two levels of certainty now you have almul yaqeen and you have aynul yaqeen you've seen your eyes your 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 beloved family members died you bury them you've seen your eyes but have you died not yet not yet so one day we will die and we have that kind of experience this is called the Haqqul Yaqin. Everyone will go here. Kullu nafsin za iqatul maut. Every living thing will die. Will taste that. Quran use za iqah. Za iqah means taste. You will taste death. Za iqatul maut. So when we taste death, then we know how it feels. May Allah give us ease dying. The Prophet asked us to make dua. Allah muhawina alayna fi sakaratil maut. Oh Allah, huh? please make it easy for us during our sakaratul maut. May Allah make it easy for us. Amin. So, and when people when 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 the time comes we'll die not later not earlier huh? fa iza jaa ajaluhum la yastakhiruna sa'atan wa la yastaqdimun whenever the time comes for you to die allah will not make it early by one second nor will he make you late by one second no on the dot psh, finish Okay. Okay. So, if you have that kind of life, you have that kind of perception that one day you will die, blah, 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 blah. Imam Ghazali says, live as long as you want, but you must die. You must die. You must have that kind of feeling. Live. You can live as long as you want. But remember, one day you will die. Because of that, when you remember death, it destroy all the the things in your life, you know. You're, you're greedy for wealth. You, you, are, you, know, you feel like, ah, 
Why should I have all those things? Why should I feel greedy to have all those things when I will leave them? That's why um, Imam Ghazali has has a, has a small book, uh, the importance in Ahya, a chapter on Zikrul Mount, remembrance of death. I think I think one of our Sheikh used to read that book. I'm not sure here. I used to read this. I think if not remember with uh, Sheikh Yahya Rodas or someone. Zikrul Mount. It's very it's very nice book by text. Cambridge Tech Society, I think, yeah. So, in right the right book. So, Imam Ali stressed a lot on the importance of remembering your death. Why? Because when you know, remember that one day you will die, then you will be very careful with this. Some people accuse him, why should you talk about death? You demotivate people, no? It's not demotivating. You motivate people to behave well. To remember that once you die, then Allah will judge you what you have done. So because of this, once you have that life after death, you have you're living in this world, you have that idea of good and bad, values incorporated in your mind. For someone who lives here, don't have that kind of understanding, the purpose of life is not there, then he lives as what he wants to be. Because he doesn't care, he will not be accountable, he will not be punished, there will be no rewards. But for us, when we live here actually what the purpose Allah has created us, then we have it. Allah says in the Quran, وَمَا تُقَدِّمُ مِنْ أَنفُسِكُمْ مِنْ خَيْرٍ تَجِدُوهُ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ Whatever good little deeds that you do, whatever small good little deeds, whatever deeds that you do, that you pass on the hereafter, you will find this Allah, this abundance rewards. Never underestimate good deeds you do in this world. Even picking up, uh, you know, Stones or picking up whatever that um, distract people, you know, hurts people. Whatever you do, even little small little things you do, remember that you will find in the heaven. This is the promise of Allah. وَمَا تُقَدِّمُ لِأَنفُسِكُمْ مِنْ خَيْرٍ تَجِدُوهُ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ وَخَيْرٌ وَعَظِيمٌ. Whatever small little, whatever deeds that you do, you will find it with Allah and Together with that is the rewards abundant, and a lot of rewards. So you have that kind because you know your life is here is not for for fun. You have will, you have uh, punishment. Okay, I've done this, and we come to love. Love. <coughs> what is ultimate love? I think everyone knows this. Love ultimately is ultimately is for Allah Subhanahu. We love Allah and Prophet Other things you love, you will separate from them. Imam Wazali says, love whatever you want, but you will become separated from it. You can love, you can love your wife, you can love your, your husband, you can love whoever you want to love, you can love your wealth, you can love your bungalow, you can love your, your Bentley or Mercedes or whatever, you, know, you can love, you can love, but you will separate it. So what's the point of loving those that you will separate it? That will be separated from you. Ultimately, the love for Allah SWT. You love someone, yes, you can love someone for the sake of Allah. Make it loving someone for the sake of Allah. You love your wife for the sake of Allah. You love your husband for the sake of Allah. Because your wife protects you from making sins. Your husband protects you from making sins. You love them for the sake of Allah. When you love them for the sake of Allah, then it is called ibadah and it is ikhlas for the sake of Allah. But you don't love them because they are physical, wealth, beauty. You love them for the sake of Allah. So that is the ultimate love. So uh, I think uh, I don't want to talk much about love because. Uh, 
our Sayyidi Maulana, uh, you know, we had written a book of love. We read that book. <laughs> it's full. <laughs> it's, not, it's not my topic. I don't, I don't want to go into that. Ask him about love. And then finally, deeds. Deeds. Remember, you know, Ghazali said, do what you want, but you will be accountable for it. Do. You can do whatever you want, but you will be repaid for it. There's nothing what you do in this world is in vain. Nothing. وَمَنْ يَعْمَلْ مِسْقَالَ ذَرَّةٍ Whatever you do, even the small little atom or zarrah. You know, zarrah during those days, people translate it as atom. An atom. But now, atom can be divided. Atom still can be divided. I don't know what is the latest division of, div uh, of atom. Last time when I studied, they go until quarks, I think. Quarks, Q U A R K S, quarks. Atom, you divide, divide. Huh? Atom, neutron, proton, and also so forth. You can divide, divide, blah, blah, blah. Nucleus, nucleus, and blah, 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 blah. And it goes to the last quarks. That's why they found it. Quarks is in still in the form of. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not a scientist. I'm not a good teacher, a science teacher. But I remember when I studied this. I studied science also. I don't think that I'm not studying study science, okay? <laughs> So this 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 is this is the last what they found out. But zarrah, according to our scholars, is not atom, it's not quarks. It is defined as al juzu la yatajazza. What does it mean? It is the smallest particle that can no longer be divided. So whenever you saw you saw the word zarrah, zarrah, not zarrah. In Quran, during those days, during my father, they translate as a big salad. Because during those days, this is the smallest that can be taken before. What do you think is how you translate? Yeah, seeds. My father said And then, when science evolved, they call it atom. But this is not the this is not zarrah. This is not zarrah. The scholars define zarrah is the, the smallest particle that can no longer be divided. You name whatever it is. If you found that that uh, that, uh, that thing can still be divided, then that's not zarrah. Zarrah is the smallest particle. How? How? How Quran tells you that Allah will take consideration that small actions you do will be counted. And you think that the big action you do won't be counted? <laughs> what more? What more if you do big things? What more if you do big things? Even the smallest thing you do, Allah will count. This is not the hadith. This is in Quran. This is not in big Quran. This is muqaddam. فَمَنْ يَعْمَلْ مِثْقَالَ ذَرَّةٍ خَيْرًا يَرَهُ وَمَنْ يَعْمَلْ مِثْقَالَ ذَرَّةٍ شَرًا يَرَهُ You do good, even the smallest particle you will see. You do bad, evil, smallest particle you will see. There's nothing escape from Allah records. No way. No way. And you will be rewarded and you will be punished accordingly. So, because of that, do whatever you want to do. Remember, you'll be accountable. You will be accountable. You will be accounted for. It's nothing escape. Don't think that you can do whatever you want. No way. But Allah will, will record it and Allah will punish it. Allah will reward it. Allah alam, I think that's all for now. We have uh, almost more than one hour already. Inshallah, um, I think uh, we are in our class. Qulqawli haza wa astaghfirullah alazim alaykum. Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.